BBC Persian TV finally hit the airwaves with a news bulletin. Salam bar shoma, Sima Ali Nejad hastam. Amir Paybar, ke muzi ro pegiri karde dar studio va mane. بازاریا الان با دولت به توافق رسیدن ولی باید دقت کنیم که این فروشگاه سرفریجز لندن یکی از بزرگترین فروشگاه های این شهر راه حلی برای رکود اقتصاد جهانی پیدا کنن علی رغم رکود بازار بسکن در دبی همونطور که می‌بینید در بعضی از قسمت ها از این شهر بحران مالی جهانی کمر این بورس رو هم شکونده مزه این ساندویچ کوچولو چطوره international oversight and scrutiny for good reason. Well, sanctions are one option amongst many. Amir, Obama says he's uh, seeking honest engagement based on mutual respect. How is this message being received in Iran? It is time for new era, for revival, for renovation. And this uh, will resonate and has resonated very well with the Iranian people who've already heard the message. Uh, are they still planning to do that, do you know? Two opposition leaders are still planning to, to go ahead. What are their options now? What could they do to move this forward? The battle is moving from streets into the corridors of power. Mr. Ahmadinejad's government doesn't really change at all. Uh, that is 11 uh, ministers changed in four years, which was also an indication of the rocky relations he had with the, with the parliament so far. Uh, we want to make sure that civilian air safety is, uh, is preserved. I guess the uh, licenses you referred to must be license of Iranian transactions regulation 560, which uh, specifically uh, says uh, certain spare parts which are necessary for aviation safety are allowed to be uh, exported, re-exported to Iran. Do we know how many such licenses have been issued in the past 10 years, specifically for aviation industry? I, I don't know how many have been issued, but, uh, but your, your point is an important one, which is our regulations do provide for the export of spare parts uh, necessary for civilian safety. I don't know the details of the uh, licenses that have been issued or how many have been applied for. The question is how easy they are to obtain and whether if someone is applying for them will automatically go under the radar of your organization. Um, I, I, I don't know how difficult they are to obtain. Uh, I do know that it is our policy to grant licenses uh, in accordance with that regulation, which uh, is intended to protect civilian air safety. Let me take uh, this last point. Uh, the, the eight people, uh, Iranian officials, who are, uh, whose assets have been frozen in states on, uh, on the grounds of human rights, uh, do we know if any of them had actually any assets in the United I, States? You know, I'm really glad you asked that question because people always ask when we, uh, when we designate people in the United States uh, and one of the effects is that, they, uh, th that their assets are frozen in the United States. And a lot of times they don't have assets in the United States. Let me tell you, people don't like to be on that list. You know why? Why? It's not just because their assets, it doesn't just freeze their assets in the United States. That list goes to every bank in the world and it's our experience that financial institutions around the world do not want to do business with those individuals and entities that have been singled out for illicit conduct, whether it's violation of human rights, whether it's proliferation, whether it's support for terrorism. You say you're giving Iran a stark choice between integration into international community or isolation. Well, what if Iran is choosing isolation? What if Iran is on the path to become another nuclear, uh, another North Korea? How would that help your cause? That wouldn't help our cause, and we hope that that's not what they'll choose. We believe that Iran does not want to be another uh, North Korea, that Iran does not want to be a, a hermit country. We believe that uh, that's inconsistent with not only Iranians' uh, 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 self-image, but also our image of Iran as a, as a, as a cultural and historical, uh, uh, historically significant and cultural leader around the world. 
Iran's economy is coming under intense pressure in the wake of international trade sanctions. Earlier this week, the European Union adopted a wave of new restrictions which targeted the country's foreign trade, banking and energy sectors. Now, Iranian shipping companies have been hit too. But in response to the West's clampdown, Tehran has embarked on a cat-and-mouse game, re-registering its merchant fleet, all in an effort to stay one step ahead of these sanctions. Amir Parivar has been tracking the movements of one such ship. Portugal. A container ship called Dandel flying the Maltese flag docks at Lisbon port. This ship loads cargo all day and night and will sail to the Mediterranean Sea before sunrise. But there is more to Dandel than meets the eye. Dandel, when it was built, was called Iran Isfahan, a name which can still be read under a thin cover of paint. It used to fly an Iranian flag and was owned by Iranian shipping lines. Three years ago, it changed its name to 12th Ocean and flew the German flag. A year after that, it became Dandel. But why the changes of name? Iran is increasingly being squeezed by international sanctions, aiming at halting its nuclear and missile programs. Earlier this week, the European Union published a tough new list clamping down on companies and people doing business with Iran. The foreign ministers adopted new restrictive measures against Iran. The EU list includes Iranian shipping lines plus 24 of its affiliate companies registered around the world. But Dandel is not the only Iranian ship to change its identity in the past two years. Iran Kermanshah became a Sena with Cypriot flag. Iran Qazi became Ajax with Hong Kong flag. And Iran Gilan became Bluebell with Maltese flag. The list goes on and includes over 70 other ships. Occasionally a ship is renamed or reflagged, but this was a pretty suspicious um, amount of activity at one time. Certainly is what makes it look as if it was um, meant to evade sanctions. Dandel's documents show that on 16th of June, its international safety management was handed over to Hansatic Trade Trust and Shipping, a company registered in Germany but when you check the address for this company, you find out it is actually that of Iranian Shipping Lines Europe branch. Hansatic was blacklisted by EU this week. According to its itinerary, Dandel is scheduled to visit ports such as Jeddah, Istanbul and eventually arrive at Shanghai on 17th October this year. International sanctions are taking their toll on Iran's economy, restricting the movement of Iranian registered ships. And that means many more vessels like Dandel are likely to see changes of name. Amir Paivar, BBC News.